Hello everybody, welcome to the Blood Bowl Super League show, episode number 7. It's the last week of the regular season. Um, we've got Calcium on to talk about everything with us, the mid-tier basher himself. And it'll be the same as you know, same as the other shows, look at all the games and everything, uh, the tables, the fixtures. And uh, yeah, don't forget to check out the website and stuff below, I'll put the links for the Discord and that. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So here's the match of the week. It is... Gdanik versus Kano. Um, Gdanik needing a win to qualify for the playoffs. Um, Kano already through. Hello, Calcium. How you doing? Not bad, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, this is a pretty pretty cool one, isn't it? Offset LOS from Gdanik gets the perfect defence to uh, shift the LOS there. Oh, wow. First action Olga. Opening up with a big guy, because why not? <laughs> <laughs> Instant removal. Yeah, it's rewarded for it. Oh, but this is it's gonna be one of them where I just abuse Kanor. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, first action of the whole game, big guy. <laughs> Glorious, no, isn't it? No F's given. <laughs> <laughs> oh, behave yourself, Kanor. Behave yourself. <laughs> Honestly. No, but he is going to get hit back by that, uh, by that Olga, maybe. An instant apple as well from Gdynik, he used that, so yeah. That was a surprise. I think I might have had that KO this early on. Um, I, you know, I understand why people, especially in this format, um, using an apple on a KO is perfectly acceptable. Um, a lot of people, including yourself, says it's exactly the right thing to do. But I might have had that one that early. Yeah, I mean it is a guard though, isn't it? And it is out for the whole half. Like it's, um, yeah, yeah. It's a big, it's a big, I and mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, equity in <laughs> in that point. That KO. Um, yeah, equity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and and you know, like Dimmy, Dimmy was saying it the other day, and like about you know how I was saying I, I would. It, he slightly misquoted me, but I said I wouldn't be surprised if there was like you know a Blood Bowl AI. I wouldn't be surprised if it just appalled when a lot of people wouldn't, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like basically, because you know everyone. Oh wow, look at that! There's the hit back. It's the kill. Oh, and there's the apple. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we're into pure blood bowl now, people. Wow. <laughs> this is a wild dog. What the hell was he doing? Was he trying to get pick up the ball? That was a five plus dodge, wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't like that. Um, I guess yeah, he was trying to pick up the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the payoff was there, though, if he got it right. It was, it was just high risk, high reward. Yeah, last action, I guess, you know, it's not horrendous, but both coaches here not having the most stellar starts they've probably ever played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But you know, it, even, even using the Rat Ogre first action, you'd have probably been better off not basing the Ogre off the back of that action, wouldn't you? Yeah, um, that, that was the weakness of it. But again, that was like yeah. the perfect defence, wasn't it? But yeah, yeah, maybe you should have tried to... Get the guard in and, and then blitz the ogre with the roger at the end somehow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, you know, mighty blow against armor 8. What can possibly go wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. Well, why is he going to foul the ogre? He is. No? No, he's going to foul the He's doing the, the run up. Oh, no, he's, oh, he's going for the catcher. Okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah, that's a better. It's, it's a yeah. more sensible foul, but obviously less, less payoff. <laughs> Ironically, in this particular format, um, I don't think fouling is as effective or as valuable. Um, but I've been fouled to death throughout this tournament, you know, um, by pretty much everyone I've played. Um, it's been crazy, whereas normally I'm the one dishing out the boots. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's made a significant change to the way I play um, this format, you know, so... Yeah, go figure. Who would have thought that I would be fouling a lot less than a, a bunch of other people? Yeah, that's wild, isn't it? But yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. They, they just aren't the high-value targets, are they? Like, there is that Roger and the Ogre, but generally, generally, the, uh, there aren't the high-value targets in this kind of format. He's just got 2D on the ball, hasn't he? I've just realised it's just an instant 2D yeah, yeah. on the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Which is... How, how can I say this nicely? Effing horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> 
in, blo in blotch we trust, you know. Um, that was uh, that was sloppy, wasn't it? But you know, like you, you don't know what he had in mind and stuff, do you? And the thing is, with the minute turns, people can run out of time, and you know they probably, you know, they might have had something in mind to finish it off, or they just didn't see it, like how we made a couple of mistakes by not seeing things. It does happen, doesn't it? Yeah, we mustn't be too harsh. You know, minute format, it's it's exceptional pressure. Mistakes will be made. But now we're seeing why Kanora's is unbeaten this season because people do not roll powers against him. <laughs> that definitely helps, yeah. <laughs> Better lucky than good. <laughs> oh dear. Words to live by, that is. Words to live by. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Ooh. especially. Okay. One to a six. Boom. So that was like a big one day, wasn't it? Yeah, if that had failed. Like, what is he? I don't think he knows where to go. <laughs> no idea. Look at him. He has no idea right now. This is hilarious. <laughs> no, no, here. No, actually. Yeah, no. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Or keeping us all guessing, bless his heart. <laughs> so, um, Gdanik's uh, mighty blow tackler has done nothing so far this game. Mm -hmm. You know, he needs him to fire, doesn't he? You'd think uh, so, yeah. And uh, to, um, luckily for Kanor, um, this mighty blow tackle blitzer is in the wrong part of the pitch. If Kanor advances up the pitch now, it's going to take that guy out of the drive, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I don't like? I don't like that that guard going back. Is if if you're gonna mark this guy with that guard, then I would have rather hit with a guard and then marked him with a thrower. So you'd have had you know your guards in next yeah. to each other and, and doing things. Whereas he's losing a guard there, isn't he? By sticking him on there. So he doesn't take the like he could have made a ball hit there if if the ogre hadn't gone stupid he, and if he'd got the pow. Or the board down, he, well, not the board down, because he would have been able to address it. But if, if the ogre had got the power, he could have had 2D on the ball again, couldn't he? But, uh, I don't want to talk about stupid ogre, Jim. It's too soon, man. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> My fucking ogre this season. It's, he's been awful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are the expert when it comes to stupid ogres. <laughs> oh my god, it's been so utterly bad. <laughs> oh dear. It really is. You've you've made you made the controversial decision to only play with a, ten players every game. <laughs> ten players max. Yeah, it, it it's been crazy, you know. And uh, but nonetheless, oh, this is so much fun. So much fun. This this format. Um, I really hope that there's a lot more of this type of format when we move over to that. Wonderful looking game, Blood Bowl 3. <laughs> God. I really don't think I will be moving over to it. But, uh, no, you and me both, mate. Oh, I think Kanor shouldn't have followed there, should he? That that, that does give uh, Gdanik a real yeah. round to do yeah. the ball. He's not going for it with his guard at all. That guard could have gone for it, couldn't he? Yeah. Why wouldn't you take that? You know, obviously there would be GFIs involved in it, but why wouldn't you take that? Mm. That's really strange. Maybe maybe he didn't see it. Um, it was pretty obvious, but again, <laughs> yeah, do you know what? The easiest thing in the world is watching somebody else play and seeing all the plays, seeing all the angles. You know, it's... We repeatedly say it. Look at that, bonehead again. He's not having a lot of luck with that ogre, is he? Uh, I think maybe it's what he was thinking of, you know, like maybe he's thinking if even if he hits it right, the, the Skaven just get it up again and get away, whereas at least, yeah. and it could have not worked, or at least this way it's guaranteed to work. And you get pressure on guaranteed, and if you get pressure on, maybe something will fail. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, Danik's been a bit lucky here because this Rat Ogre, I think, has broken armor every hit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, stunning everybody. Just stunning everybody. So, you know, it's a mixture of bad and good luck, isn't it? You know, if you break an armor every turn, you want them to be stuns. Um, maybe Gaday Nick was looking to force an early score yeah. from Kanor. Yeah. Like, that's the thing, isn't it? Because what can happen against, like, fast teams like Skaven is you can, you can try and get their balls, but then when you fail, you're suddenly exposed and you've given them a long stall. Yeah. So, and, and, like, with Gaday Nick having to win... 
I guess he thought, you know, play it conservative and then give up the score with time to... Like, you know, even if even if he gets a two-turn with humans, that's very possible, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, so Gnadnik has to force a score this turn, really, doesn't he? He have to get, has to get... He has to sort of keep centre pitch, but get into those gutter runners' faces, you know? Or at least... Make it so that they can't... Just make it so they can't stall next turn is the thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. He yeah, just yeah. has to... Yeah. He can't overcommit one way or the other. You know, making them roll a one in... One in 36s isn't... It's unlikely to be effective, but... <laughs> um, yeah. it's, at least it's something, isn't it? Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. So this guy probably just wants to, like, go back here or something, doesn't he? Okay, so he's, he's basing the line here. Ah, and then the catch is going to stand there-ish. Okay, I think I maybe just would have wanted another player over there. But this is pretty difficult to stall, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I, I, I was thinking just then that I would be looking for another turn, at least, to stall. So I wouldn't be surprised if Knorr switches to the right side of the pitch here. Um, but you only, yeah, 1 in 36s do happen. Yeah. I'm not sure about the blitz. I think that that blitzer could have just stood up here, couldn't he? And then would have had yeah. like a full yeah. screen. Yeah. yeah so, uh, <laughs> Canal going for the strange. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. What's he done there? <laughs> yeah. Canal going for the strange strategy of not protecting the ball at all. <laughs> Straight out of the Space Cadet playbook. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could have just like gone here and here to screen it, but instead there's just literally nothing. Just a couple of GFIs to TD the ball. What is that? <laughs> wow. I feel like I should share with the audience now that obviously I said that I'd be nice. Yes, Are please we, be nice. Not, please always um, be nice, Calcium. I can't... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stress um, this enough. Yeah, uh, you know, I'd like to say, um, you know, being um, balanced and subjective here, that that was awful. <laughs> it, it wasn't good. But again, look, Kanoz already won the group, basically. He's guaranteed qualifying. So, you yeah, know, he's, yeah. He's probably doesn't care that much. And also a minute, and you don't, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so G'day Nick able to get the force to score there with the push, which leaves him a two turn. Um. Leaves him a two-turn chance, which with catches, that's that's not terrible, is it? No, that's right. Two rats down. Ten. Ten rats, eleven humans. I never really considered Skaven. Um, I'm not a Skaven player anyway, but I never really considered Skaven to be a strong choice for this particular format. Um, but... Kanora obviously had different ideas. <laughs> I mean, that's the, the the problem that Skaven always have in like res tournaments is everyone's terrified of them being overpowered, so they're generally under tiered or over tiered depending on your point of view, isn't it? You know, so like yeah, yeah, because people just don't want Skaven. Like <laughs> Skaven are, are pretty much like the they've got the most busted potential of like every team. Like obviously not so much in in res because they don't get the plus movement and claw on but you know they've got yeah. they've still got move nine, edge four plus. Yes, yeah, <laughs> well basically if you give Skaven an inch in any format, they're gonna take a hundred yards out of you, aren't they? They you know they are one skill away from being devastating. Um, so. Yeah, Skaven is so difficult to play against. Isn't it? Yeah, and, and yeah. so so they are really difficult to tier like correctly, yeah. I think, and and that's what happens. That tournament organisers are all now. What we're seeing here from Gadir Nick is again want to be nice, but this is just abject failure from Gadir Nick as he doesn't realise he's only got two turns <laughs> and moves one catcher back and one not very far forward. <laughs> Yeah, this is, um, again, you know, um, being nice right now, this is 
horrible. <laughs> yeah, this is completely awful. <laughs> completely awful. And then, like, he still hasn't got a scoring threat, and then he's like, oh my god, it's turn seven! <laughs> so he's gonna dodge with this guy to get a scoring threat. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, and instead of potentially having three scoring threats, <laughs> he's now got one, which is going to be pretty easily dealt with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So, yeah, that was a bit of a disaster. Isn't it nice when block on a big guy works? You know, when your big guy doesn't roll continuous ones. What's, what's that like? What's that like? <laughs> yeah. It, and, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, it's funny that in Group A... Um, you know, we've got first at the moment is Kanor, second at the moment is Rick, uh, both with block big guys who have powered them to victory. Has Rick actually rolled a single one on one of his ogres the whole season? <laughs> yes, yeah, but uh, he hasn't He hasn't failed uh, much important, basically. <laughs> Blood Bowl Jesus walking on water with ogres this season, honestly. <laughs> Behave yourself, Rick. <laughs> So now really all Nick can do is get some hits in this moment, but that, that, that was a huge mistake, huge mistake from him. He should have absolutely had the catches in range. And, I feel uh, like I'm in no position to judge him not giving himself decent scoring threats, because I did that twice this season. <laughs> yeah, but like, he just literally didn't read, like, he thought to himself, oh, I've got a two turn here, and then just... Then just instantly yeah. forgot, like he said it, I watched it live, and he was just like, he couldn't yeah, believe it. <laughs> so, you know, he, he can't argue with that. Uh, like, you know, he said it himself, it was just, just a massive, massive mistake. Which, you know, it happens, doesn't it? That's the thing with the minute turns. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, that, that was a nice chip, but that's Storm Vermin, wasn't it? Very so. Nice, you know. And a cheeky foul, didn't do anything. Yeah, do you know what? I just, I think I value having people on the pitch over the risk of fouling. I, th I think here um, I foul, I think here I foul, because he's 1-0 down, he has to win. Like, he just has to win, right? If he, if he draws, yeah. he's out. So, how do you win against Skaven? Yeah, even, 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 the Skaven, yeah <laughs> even the Skaven being three players down for this drive, they're still very effective, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's the thing. When, when you give them the ball, like which you're gonna in like three or four turns, they're gonna get the ball and you want them to have no players left <laughs> or as few as possible because like it's just so hard isn't it it's giving on super hard to deal with especially especially hard like all elves are like hard to win in normal time against aren't they once they've scored you're like uh... very much so yeah <laughs> at least he's got humans so at least he can try like if he was dwarves here he's like well the best i can do is draw <laughs> Yeah, he's got the mobility, hasn't he, to you know, to win this two one. Um he really needs to Not smash a blitz down. Oh blitz. <laughs> the second half blitz has been a real thing this season. It's happened loads. Inarian did it against you. He also did it against me. Um I've seen it loads. Or maybe it's just been three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's still loads. <laughs> yeah, it is loads, isn't it? Um, I'm not going to miss how devastating the likes of Perfect Defense and Blitz, you know, has been. Oh, I don't know about that, early doors. Oh, he's double wounded. And he's killed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely huge. I guess it was towards the end of his turn, realistically. Yeah. Probably not doing anything with Rat Ogre. Leaving that wrestle gutter back as a safety. So, yeah, I hate it less now I'm analysing it, but he had to really try and get Tackle Zone on the ball, didn't he? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, Tackle Might in the gutter, that is obvious. Yeah. Obvious move is obvious. Um, he's got to try and get, like, a handoff, though, hasn't he? To, to a... I want to score in, like... Three here. I wouldn't want to score in four. Three maximum, isn't it? Um, yeah. Four turns. Um, you, you'd find, you know, because the gutters, if you don't do lots of attrition right now on the remainder of this team, then they're just going to two turn you, aren't they? Yeah. 
So I think I would, like, it's hard to two turn, wasn't it? That was the thing. It was hard to two turn from where he was. So I think I would have tried to yeah. get a three turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he'll actually remember to give himself a scoring threat this time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey, this is, this is one of the reasons why I think minute turn format is wonderful. Because it makes paupers of us, all, all us blood bowl princes, you know. <laughs> it, it, it really does. And I, I know there are coaches out there that really hate that aspect. I friggin' love it. Yeah, me too. And yeah, speaking of that, I do think you should have handed off there, you know? Because yeah, yeah. He, he can't score before turn four now without GFIs. I don't think he's going to make three GFIs with three rerolls to turn over Canal, so I think he should have absolutely, you know, he still had this uh, Blitzer, could have gone out in front, and then he could have uh, could have handed off to that catch, and I think that's what he should have done. I mean, far yeah. be it from me to criticise Gdernik, because, you know, he is absolutely one of the best players in this competition, uh, no doubt, he won CCL well, twice. His yeah, his credentials are, you know, beyond compare. Um, and again, as commentators, we have to reserve the right to call it as we see it. And do you know what? If coaches get precious about that, then, <laughs> you know, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, so now he's just going to tag this, this ogre to stop it getting in, into the balls. Yeah. Don't want that ogre attacking your balls. Keep the attack. Um, you leave the ogre put here. You don't activate him, do you? No, he's going to blitz the... He's gonna blitz the, uh, gonna blitz the gutter, isn't he? Mighty blow him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He's set up for it now, isn't he? Hey, and there probably you go. Why I, I you can feel at home now, calcium. <laughs> <laughs> I would have probably taken the shot with the mighty blow tackle blitzer, you know, um, and then defended up. But yeah, I would have, I would have loved to have just seen that ogre stay put, and then a tackle zone on both. Both these linos that can now release themselves. Yeah. But what do I know? I tell you, what, I know a lot about ogres boneheaded. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but again, like it was a hit, it was a three day on the gutter, wasn't it? And at the end of yeah. the day, um, you know, if it doesn't really matter if you take out this guard, storm vermin. But if if you can take out the gutter as well, then that's then that's how you can beat them, isn't it? At the end of the day. This game's easy in hindsight, man. It's easy. <laughs> yeah. He's got his canoring threat now. No, no, he's just running around for an assist. <laughs> I thought that was very optimistic, getting him as a, <laughs> getting him as a scoring threat. But now it gives it gives Nick a guy to blitz with mighty blow, so I think he'll just try and move up safely and yeah. still get the mighty blow blitz on the gutter again now. Yeah, if you could chip a gutter runner here, then that's huge, isn't it? That's... Yeah, so I, th I think that's what Nick was probably thinking more about than the than the scoring. Like, there's no point scoring in two or three if they've got all their gutters left. You, you know, because how do you deal with gutters? You don't is the answer. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I think this was a mistake because he could have uh, could have stood him up, couldn't he? Oh, I guess this way he gets the three dice. Okay, I'll let I'll let him off. I'll let him off. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Get to the cards. There, there we go. Yeah, I, I like the 2D, like, you know, standing him up for, and then 2Ding him into the Ogre so that you could get another hit at him, but then three dice with tackle. Just as good or better. Yeah, yeah good return from that. Um, and, you know, uh, barring some kind of low odds miracle play from Kanori scoring next turn, uh, yeah. gutter off the pitch, it's actually looking okay for Good Day Nick right now. Yeah. There's currently a KO'd gutter as well, isn't there? So there's, uh, there's, there's currently two gutters down. This so. rat ogre refusing to actually kill anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just incessantly stunning the humans. <laughs> there's only one gutter on the field at the moment. Did he only have three gutters? It looks like he only had three gutters. Yeah, was it a three gutter ro rogue build? Yeah, I guess it was. I guess he only had three gutters. Something that I should have looked at, really. But yeah, it looks like there was only three gutters, and he's maybe down to one. This is going to be a huge KO roll, isn't it? This one. Yeah. 
So would you favour a Rogue free gutter build, or would you go four gutters? I'm I'm leaning towards four gutters myself. Yeah, I think I think you would have to go for. I would have to go for gutters personally. Uh, even if I was going with a Rogue, I'd try and fit in four gutters just because. Yeah. It's the best. Don't get me wrong. I'm partial to a big guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love I love a big guy on the team. Um, that being said, go run is significantly better. <laughs> yeah, like I I like I like rogers. I, I I when I'm starting in CCL, I start uh, I tend to start with a roger and only three gutters. Oh wow, he comes back. So that's a massive that is a massive recovery there because if he was down to one gutter, that'd be a lot trouble. worse. Wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's only got seven players. Yeah, I think, I think G'day Nick, if you'd said to G'day Nick, you'll be 1-1 one, one, turn going into turn 13 against seven players with a full team, um, you'd probably take that, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I think you would. And had he remembered which turn it was in the first half, he could have been 2-1 up as well. <laughs> It doesn't matter how much we lambast him for that. No one's <laughs> kicking himself more more than him. Is it? you know yeah. he's like. <laughs> All right, gains a turn. Oh wow! Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, another turn to hunt them down. So, does Kanor play aggressive here and look for the two turn, or does he? play well essentially dacker i guess he's it's not going to be a dacker <laughs> in the conventional sense of the word is it but mm. well he set up both gutters back so i guess he is just trying to delay as long as possible see what yeah see what he can produce Fosky pushes leaves the uh these two players on on a guy yeah And also the wrestler holding the ball isn't ideal, is it? Yeah, no, you really need to switch the ball to that blodger, don't you? I think I think that's probably worth doing. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe we should have tried that last turn. Yeah. Right, they're, they're pretty safe back there. So, yeah, maybe we should have tried to transfer it. Also, this guy probably should have been screening here, shouldn't he? But again, that might have just been a 80-minute turns mistake. <laughs> Catcher. Herb dirt base base basing. Yeah, obviously just basing everyone now, good day, Nick, because yeah. he's got the man's advantage. Gotta get the rats rolling dice. There's another oh, one there's gone. Another one. Yeah. Um that would have actually done for the rat ogre if he'd hit the rat ogre. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just say him. <laughs> <laughs> This is pretty. This is pretty good from from Gdynik. The only weakness is, I guess, this being strength two over here, and the fact that he only can make a two D. Have a stun <laughs> from this <laughs> glorious logo. <Luger. laughs> yeah, Kanor yeah, exploiting the uh, strength two guy. Pals yeah. is dodger. Oh, and a cas. <laughs> Punished. So, oh, Kanor could essentially. I don't hate the sideline screen here. Yeah, yeah. That's... Um, he, he's not. No, he's not going to sideline KJ. He's just going to drop in just in front of the. Oh, you can hand off to. Oh, can... oh, yeah, oh, look at that. Yeah, well played. Oh God, did I just say that? Yeah, well played. <laughs> <laughs> that that dodge was needed though. Otherwise, the tackler could have yeah, come out the back. Yeah, yeah. And see, in this that situation. That dodge to secure position, um, Kanor had nothing else. He's down to six players. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so that's fine. You know, um, he, he's under the cosh anyway. Um, so, yeah, there was nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So, yeah, blitz one got a... Ooh. That's a yeah. horrible one in nine, isn't it? A horrible yeah. one in nine. <laughs> I like the reroll there. Oh, my God, remove. So there's only one gutter left. I didn't like the follow because he had movement left, didn't he? Um, I would have liked him to have been yeah, yeah. Down and down. Um, I, I guess there it isolates that wrestle liner. 
Yeah, yeah, okay, but, yeah, I guess that was his thinking, yeah. But, but really that gutter's movement nine. Yeah, the gutter's movement nine, so he's getting out of range of this mighty blow tackler, so it's, I think I prefer your option slightly. I mean, I, I don't know how much difference it makes, but I think that's what I would have wanted just because, yeah, the, the gutter's the only thing I care about <laughs> on the team. And as it happens, he does just dodge forward, does the oh, you Dirty dingo. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he didn't have two players to screen it, did he? If if that hadn't been a KO, he could have actually probably screened it, but it's just a just a potato. But Nick can get three dice here, can't he? And the throw yeah. it to recover. Yeah. I don't think Knorr had anything except a potato there, did he? Yeah, it was either potato forwards or run away backwards. Like yeah, yeah. Either, either way wasn't very good. Gets the power the second time of asking. Cool, you know good A Nick's asshole was twitching there, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was tighter than a super massive black hole for a second there. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't like this. Uh, do you know what? I would have, I would have, I would have fouled. I don't know about you, Calcium, but I would have fouled. Oh, yeah, oh look at that! No, what? I, I was about to say, how unlucky is it? He's obviously channeling his inner Calcium Cas and failing to pick up a ball with short hands. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I would, I would have quite liked, the, I would have quite liked the foul there. Yeah, but I guess by moving him back, he, he felt he needed the scoring threats. All the Hogan. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, they're all famous Aussies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of them not so famous. Um, but, you know, limited. They've got limited things to work with, haven't they, the Aussies, <laughs> when it comes to celebrities. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, there you go. He's trying to do something with dodges. So now he's got two turns, and really he's got to he's got to catch her here. But the unsupported, see, if he if he'd move this blitzer down, then okay, he's moving him away from the gutter. But if he if he moved him down, he would have had him here to hit him and free up the catcher, wouldn't he? Yeah. Maybe he should have handed off this turn or passed this turn. It's hard, like, it is hard. It is hard with this gutter still being on the field because you know that if you fail something, the gutter's just going to go and get the ball as well, isn't he? So, the player he's got on the right-hand side, the scoring threat, would you have not wanted to maybe switch him across to the other side of the pitch? Yeah, I think I would have done, yeah. Yeah, you move him to here and then you've got him able to blitz. Yeah, him yeah. Free. I mean, not that it matters now, but, and I guess I guess this way by at least it takes his storm vermin away, whereas if he had him there. But yeah, I would have had him more central at least. Yeah. Finally, the roger decides to injure something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So the catcher is in range. Are you telling me there's a chance? All you need in blood bowl. And he's in the end zone. So it's like a 4 plus or a 5 plus pass? 5 I think, isn't it? He goes for the, he goes for the handoff what? with the reasoning that he's got. Pass on the pass. But I feel like that's no. not good. Makes the pass. Oh, oh nice the catch. What? Oh. Heartbreak for terrible humans. Brutal, brutal. And uh, now, this game, mate. <laughs> what's coming up is it doesn't matter to Kanor because he's through whatever happens. But there's a time for a horrible misplay from Kanor here, which is trying to score. <laughs> you know, if he fails this pick up, the catcher could have just caught it and scored. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really bad. That's like horribly bad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how Ducky uh, lost to uh, lost to Dionysian in Blitzpit. 
<laughs> Except that we, you know, overtime was looming and stuff, and and it was, but it was, yeah, it was a very low odds score that like that that Dudley yeah. went for, and then that happened, and then yeah, Cano nearly replicated it, but obviously it wouldn't have mattered to him. He was through whatever happened. No, that's right. Yeah, Cano, Cano was playing um, with a kind of freedom there, so I think the mistakes we saw Cano make um, can be justified by him saying, "Well, look, I'm just coasting now. You know, I've already yeah. done the job." Yeah, and Kenora is also one of those guys who, like, a bit like Rick, isn't he? He'll, he'll, he goes for a bit more of the entertainment for the crowd kind of plays than the, uh, yeah, yeah. than the vicious uh, dwarf min maxing that some of us go for. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about, Jim. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, there you go. Good in, it was close, but that draw does mean that he won't qualify, and it does guarantee uh, Kenora's spot at the top of the group. And the second game of this week was Elliot versus Rick Reckless. Did you catch this one, Calcium? No, I didn't. Ah, well, uh, this was one where more what you would expect to happen would happen between ogres and orcs. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know how Rick has done it in this tournament. Like, he did make a bunch of removals, but, you know, it just generally didn't get what he needed to win which is mostly what you'd expect isn't it really to be yeah. honest like uh you know orcs, orcs, are a real team. orcs are a really bad racial matchup for ogres because they have increased strength and significantly a bunch of armor nine so yeah. you know even if your ogres are firing on all cylinders they need to be high rolling don't they to get orcs removed from the pitch so um and i i do know that Eliod had an awful start to this campaign um and he's had a really good recovery hasn't he, he so is, yeah. probably on the crest of a wave a little bit and Elliot's a great player you know um don't get me wrong uh, rick is a great player and some could argue that he might be the mvp of this whole competition having done what he uh, today having done what he's done with ogres it's yeah. ridiculous isn't it you know <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous it really you know? is and uh, unfortunately, this match was not played. Uh, Christopher and Shawnee, nothing to play for. Didn't really care too much. Um, but, you know, so they just didn't bother playing, which is fair enough, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, I think as an admin, I think you have to accept that at the tail end of the season, if it doesn't affect anything, then just don't get precious about it. Just let it go. You know, it, it's just a game of football, isn't it? So... And I, I, I think if, you know, instead of throwing your toys out the pram, go, oh, I'm banned for months, you know, um, handle it this way. It's fine. So this is the final standings of Group A. Um, incredible, incredible unbeaten from Kanar and qualifying in second place, Rick with Augers. <laughs> I didn't, do you know what? Before the division started, I didn't give Kanor much chance and I certainly didn't give Rick Reckless much chance. So I sit corrected. Um, congratulations to both of them. You know, the stats don't lie, especially Rick. You know, hey, well done Kanor for winning the division. Um, but Rick is, you know, way outperformed. You know, he's got 150% out of these ogres. Now, he may, I, I to be honest, I haven't massively followed his games i don't know if he's been significantly lucky i know rick reckless dice is a thing <laughs> but you know props to him taking ogres he should be banned from playing ogres from now on i think you know, so um, clearly that clearly it's a little bit unfair on the rest of the blood bowl community <laughs> It's funny that you should that you that you'd say you didn't give him much chance. I gave him no chance. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, everyone's got a chance in Blood Bowl, haven't they? You know. Um, but yeah, he had a very low chance. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that Shawnee didn't do better. Um, given I slightly preferred his human build to mine. Yeah. Um, what happened with Shawnee, I've I've saw pretty much every one of Shawnee's games and every every game was an absolute dicing one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Blood Bowl's difficult to stomach when it's like that. You can handle it when the dice are pretty balanced and it's a competitive game, which, to be fair, barring probably one game I've played, most of my games have been pretty competitive affairs. Um, but yeah, if you're on the right side or the wrong side of a mega dicing every game, you know, it's out of your hands, isn't it? It's out of your hands. So, moving on to Group B, um, we had Calcium up against Dior. Um, so there you go, take it away. 
yeah. <laughs> um, do you know what? Actually, I felt like I played better against Dio than I probably have anyone else this season. Um, I don't think I made any significant mistakes. Um, I felt really... I stopped Dio scoring. I, I, I won the toss and I decided to play in defence. And I did the job. I stopped him scoring. Um, I was down to nine at the second half reset. And then within a turn, he'd remove two players. I was down to seven Oof. and I was in big, big trouble. That being said, I was a five plus throw with my thrower away, away from winning the game. You know, uh, so I'm, I'm really happy with the way I played, but the attrition really... So his Claw Mighty did the square root of FA for what, the first five or six turns? It was great. You know, there's there's nothing more demoralising as a bash coach than hitting with Claw Mighty and it doing nothing. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you've invested two skills. Like, that's the thing, right? I really yeah. think it was a mistake. Because, yeah. you know, as, as cool as Claw Mighty is to have, I think it's a mistake in this kind of skill-limited format to, to allocate two skills, yeah. you know? And yeah. It's just... Yeah. Well, I can guarantee, Jim, that you looked at Chorf, so the same way I looked at Chorfs before this division started. Now, if we, if I could have got a favourable Chorf build, one that I liked, I'd be playing Chorfs all day. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, but I, I just didn't like the way they shaped up in this format. Um, obviously, Dio did, um, but Dio played really solid as well. You know, it was... Um, I've, I've sort of thrown a lot of shade Dio's way, mainly because he just plays the polar opposite to me you know and it's just banter but yeah it was really enjoyable playing against him and you know he was the deserving winner he made no mistakes either really um minute turns you know and um it's a bit of a shame that he's he's gonna he's obviously stepping out for next season which is a bit of a shame because he enhances any competition he's in doesn't he so Absolutely. but but yeah um it's again you know hey i'm enjoying games against Dio. Who, who would have thought? So, it, it, you know, I'm I'm happy with the way I played this season. You know, um, with slightly kinder dice at key times, things could have gone my way. Hey, that's blood bowl. Deal with it. Dust yourself off. Move on. Right. The second game in Group B was actually a really important match. Um, so, if Andy won, he would definitely qualify, and there would be a good chance of PC not qualifying. Um, if it was a draw, then PC definitely qualified, and there was a good chance of Andy not qualifying. Um, PC kicked, defended the score, and then just turtled his way to a 0 0. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not bad enough that PC decided to play dwarfs in this format anyway. He then turtled his nuts off through the entire <laughs> second half. <laughs> You should be ashamed, PC. Start, you know, whipping yourself in penance. But no, let, right. So, no, joking aside, banter aside, um, PC was my favourite for this whole competition um, before it all started. PC has, again, his credentials don't lie. We'll have a look at the leaderboard in due course, but his credentials don't lie. He's finished top. Um, he done the job. Yeah, it wasn't conducive to a good viewing experience, but it's about finishing top. Um, and can I just say as well that Andy, I think, again, Andy's played brilliant this whole season. Um, really impressed, impressed with the way I, uh, Andy's played. And I think Andy's the only player in this whole division to actually outplay me in any of the games. I don't feel that you or PC or Dio outplayed me. Um, you know, you, you out caught the ball <laughs> against me, Jim. <laughs> but I don't think I was outplayed. Um, but I think Andy played better than me, significantly better, especially in the second half. So massive respect to both of these coaches, you know, but, you know, I got nothing but love for, for both of them. But, you know, PC, I've always been a massive advocate for. But please play something besides Dwarfs next season, you <laughs> bellend. <laughs> and that draw meant that I had to, I only had to draw against Denarian and uh, I absolutely diced the living pants off him. <laughs> You know what this was like? This was like um, that film, uh, the John Carpenter film, They Live. You walked into the, you walked into the bank, right? And you went, I'm here <laughs> to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Everything you hit, you broke, didn't you? You just yeah. ran over. You steamrolled an Aryan. Um, it was, it was 
almost comedy, even against halflings, it was comedy mega dice in one. It was oh, crazy. Abso absolutely. Like eight cars. He made two fouls, got sent off on them both. Like it yeah. was just horrible. It was such an absolute dicing. Um, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I thought I played all right, but again, it, it just it really didn't matter. Well, because it was you know, just... at the end of the day, yeah, at the end of the day, Anarian probably had no more than 10% chance of winning this game. You know, um, maybe 20 if I'm being really generous. Um, but yeah, straight away, certainly when when the first foul got sent off and then you got, you know, and then you did a removal. It, me and obviously me and drunk Dimmy were <laughs> saying it was over by turn three and it, it really was, you know. So uh, um, fair play to Anari. Again, Anari has been great value this season. Um, he may reflect that taking halflings was probably not the best idea in the world. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But who'd have thought that you'd fall into Land of the Dwarfs? You know, uh, Division B, you know, Dwarfsville. <laughs> exactly, and, and Rick qualified with his augers, so, you know, it, it yeah. is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But again, Inarian, um, you know, I, I, I can't say any more that's already been said. He's hands down probably the best Wood Elf coach to have ever played them. Um, and pound for pound, one of the best out there. Um, and, you know, he enhances any competition that he's in. Um, obviously, he was pretty vocal about not loving the one-minute format, which is a little bit of a shame, but, you know, hey, it's not for everyone. Um, but, and you, yeah, you know, you're okay, and you? you're all right. Thanks. <laughs> I better not kiss your ass while I'm actually chatting to you. Christ, it's bad enough when, it's bad enough when I'm not chatting to you, do you know what I mean? But... <laughs> <laughs> and here are the final standings uh, PC and I tied on points um, he had the head to head over me because he did beat me as one of my two losses so that's why PC wins the group yeah congratulations PC um, and congratulations to you Jim you know you, you guys haven't had it all your own way you haven't steamrolled um, the division with your dwarves have you you know um, you, you've had to fight and claw for, for your victories um, and when you look at the table, there's only three points. I, I, I know it's only a seven week season, but there's not much separating any of us really, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but that might just be me trying to make me and Mr. Page feel a little bit better about things. <laughs> <laughs> and there is only two points for a win as well. Yeah, so, you know, there, there is that yeah. aspect of it as well. <laughs> oh yeah, shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, unlucky to Andy Davo, unlucky. Um, you know, I, I, I think that, hey, only two people can qualify and you two have deserved it. But I think Andy can count himself as being a little bit unlucky to have not qualified. Um, and and Dio as well. Uh, Di one of Dio's losses was against Inarian just like due to not scheduling. So Dio could have easily been on, like, you know, it was Chofs against Halflings. He could have easily been on eight points as well. But he had lost to me and PC at that point. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame that that, because that was mid-season, wasn't it? That was sort of midway through. Um, and it's a real shame that, you know, if you enter with a competition like this, and I know sometimes real life gets in the way and it's not particularly easy. Um, but, you know, we, we as when you commit to something like this, it's always really cool to try and get your games done. But again, you've been super relaxed about it, which I think is entirely the right thing to do. Um, in anything outside of CCL, you know, but um, yeah, nonetheless, um, I think the, the right two people have qualified from this group. Oh, thanks. And here are the semi-finals set. We've got uh, Purple Chess as the winner of Group B versus Rick Reckless, the runner up from Group A, and then Canal, the Group A winner versus the runner up from Group B, Jimmy Fantastic. So, me and Dimmy had a big disagreement about who was going to win each of these semi-finals last night. Yeah. And uh, so, I personally think, so we'll start with the first match, Purple Chess versus Rick Reckless. I actually think that Karma is going to hit Rick Reckless's ogres by way of a giant purple fist. <laughs> 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 so I, I I just I just cannot see and unless it's unless we go into comedy mega dicing scenario um, and he's gonna need the kind of dice that I really rolled against purple chest where I actually outbashed him you know um, with humans 
he's bearing in mind he's got a lot more mighty blows so there's every possibility he could be breaking armor nine um but i don't know about you jim but i i can't see past a purple chest win here yeah i mean you, you've got a back pc big favorite but you know rick can roll dice right he's got six mighty blow because he loves a foul if if he just starts tear, you know if he rolls good on the fouls he can just tear through pc's team and uh you know, and even but, though he's yeah. got loads of tackle, it's, he can still dodge in a two plus, can't he? Because of stunt he, yeah. so... The worst case scenario for, um, for Purple Chest is that he goes down a player or two against Rick's team. If he does that, and then the Ogres can control the remaining Dwarves, he's in big trouble. Um, but if his armor 9 holds, and he keeps a full team, you know, losing one player is fine. But you start going over the two player mark with Dwarves, things become really difficult. So, and, and you know, this is this is no disservice to Rick, the fact that I'm favouring Purple Chest here. Um, we all know what Rick can do, what Rick can roll, <laughs> you know. Um, so it's going to be, do you know what, it's going to be a great spectacle, um, regardless. Yeah, yeah, it's not a knock on Rick, it's just he's got he's got freaking ogres, hasn't he? You know, like the, the, how yeah, they win the yeah. game is by, is yeah. by getting lucky, because if they yeah. don't get lucky, they're going to lose, because they're a bit crap. <laughs> Yeah. The fact that we're actually saying, well, Rick has got a chance with these ogres is testament to how Rick is playing with ogres, yes. isn't it? Yeah. You know, it, it, most other coaches would be like, yeah, but it wouldn't even be a discussion. Would it? it wouldn't even be a discussion. Yeah. So the second game, um, which obviously you, you're going to struggle to talk about because you're featured in it, Kanor versus yourself. Um, I've gone with you. Dimmy has... For, Dimmy... Um, Knorr's like the second coming or something, isn't he? You know, um, <laughs> yeah. I think I think Dimmy's a little bit in love, right? You know, so uh, may, may, maybe it's that shock of white in Knorr's beard. You know, I, I don't know what it is, but <laughs> <laughs> Dimmy has got a proper man crush going on. Yeah, um, I disagree. I disagree with Dimmy. I think that I don't know if you're necessarily the favourite in this game. I don't think there's a lot between the two of you. Um, maybe 60-40 in your favour, given the racial matchup. But, yeah, Knorr, again, has played really well all season. But I just think that you're going to get on top of him and do the business. I really do. I'm So, I'm going with you on this one. Um, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, kind of similar, right? I think, I think the way that Skaven versus Dwarves work in general is, like, obviously, unless there's a Gulfin class and there isn't a Gulfin class... So how, how it works is, basically, the Dwarves are pretty much favoured, assuming everything goes, you know, to plan. Uh, the problem is, obviously, Skaven are trying to make it not go to plan, and, and they're going to make, you know, they're probably going to get an uphill sack attempt, or they're going to do something where you've got to make a few blocks in one turn to get forward, and, you know, just stuff like that, right? Or if they might get a blitz, or, you know, so they're, they're looking for all of those, like, edge cases that they can push, and, you know, like, Chunt is a great example, isn't he? He'll always go for those, like, you know, uphills to yeah. crack something and stuff. And so, you know, I think the status quo is basically edging towards the Dwarves, but, they, you know, the Skaven have got, like, all these wildcard players up their sleeves, haven't they? Which, if they nail one of those, it's it's lights out because they're movement nine. And <laughs> you can't catch them because you're Dwarves. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, one thing that you do very well, um, you know, you're a vastly experienced coach. And your positional play with slower teams like Dwarves is second to none. I don't know of anyone, you know, we're, we're, we're talking Purple Chest. You know, you're, you're on the same cloud as Purple Chest when it comes to positioning. Dwarves, um, you're 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 probably as good as anyone I've seen do it. Um, that being said, it's you know the old Mike Tyson adage, you know everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. If Knorr rolls some ridiculous dice against you, if his rat ogre removes a couple of your dwarves, again you're in the same position as I just talked about. Purple chess versus Rick, you know you're two, three dwarves down. Suddenly it doesn't matter how good you are positionally, you you can't contain this onslaught of movement seven, stroke movement nine. Um, you know, so yeah, um, you know, and hey, when we talk about things needing to go your way, things need to go Knorr's way as well. He needs his armor seven to hold, you know, he needs, he needs his, he needs his gutter runners to behave, you know, um, he needs to not suffer attrition because as soon as you can, you know, you get a sniff of those gutter runners, you're punching them out. Um, Hopefully. so, <laughs> you know, uh, and yeah, it's pretty clear what you both have to do in this game, but I'm. You know, when I say that I think that you're going to prevail, it's 60-40. There's not a lot in it. 
Yeah, no, um, I mean, there, there isn't in any of these games, is there? That's the thing. No, even, no. even like even even ogres against dwarves isn't isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I'm so purple chest. If I had to put a percentage figure on it, I'm I'm going eighty twenty in favour of purple chest. Twenty percent. Hey, I've had a lot of worse odds than that in my life. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah. So no disservice to Kanor. Um, I think he's played a spectacular season. He's top of the division, so stats don't lie. Um, but I am expecting a purple chest versus Jimmy final. Oh, well, from a selfish point of view, I hope you're right. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, well, thank you very much, Calcium. Uh, it's been amazing to have you on. Absolutely glorious. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic. <laughs>